This is Life Questions, the place you turn to for biblical insights in godly perspective on life. And I'm your host, Bill Harris. In response to the many questions you, our faithful viewers, have written us about life's complex issues, we've gathered together a cadre of ministers to address those concerns. And so after much prayer and biblical research over your letters, they are here with us today. We want you to meet them at this time. First, we have Pastor Michael Wyckoff of Joy Harvest Fellowship here in Lima, followed by Pastor Kelly Waltz of Spencerville Trinity United Methodist Church, and then one of two lead pastors of Cornerstone Church of Lima, and she is Pastor Janet Wind. Rounding off our panel today is Senior Pastor Michael Lyons of In Faith Ministries, also of Lima. Happy to have you all with us today. Thank you. For having well, listen, here's a question that I think is a good one to lead our program. And I'm, I'm sure that um, there are some people out there that have this in mind other than just the viewer who wrote it. It says, why did God take my brother-in-law? Now, this question is from an 18-year-old boy who just lost, uh, it's a girl who just lost her 28-year-old brother-in-law due to COVID-19. And um, this, this brother-in-law leaves behind a wife and an infant baby. And so obviously this individual is, is in grief right now, needs much prayer about that. But what do we have to say? The question he asks is why did God take his brother-in-law? She, she asked, rather. Well, uh, sometimes there's an obvious answer, other times not. Why did so-and-so die? But I can answer this, God did not take that baby. Or I'm sorry, the brother-in-law, right? I'm sorry. The brother-in-law. Yeah. Satan took him. Um, I mean, we have scriptures, John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and destroy. Right. I am come that you might have life, not death. Um, how God went about doing good, this is Acts 10:30, I think. Um, how Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed by the devil, yeah. for God was with them. Um, you know, God gives life, Satan kills. Mm -hmm. Um, God doesn't make people sick only to have Jesus heal them. Um, right. You know, a house divided itself cannot stand. And, you know, we need to question anything we believe about the Father that we don't see in the Son, in what He said and what He did. I mean, how many times did Jesus say, well, no, my son or my daughter, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to keep you sick so you, I, you can learn some spiritual lesson. We do, we do learn spiritual lessons during it. God makes sure that happens. You know what Satan does? God makes better. And um, you know, uh, how many storms did Jesus bless? Um, you know, so, you know, Jesus never refused to heal somebody. And so I like to say, I wish it was my expression, but I heard this, Jesus is perfect theology. You know, and Philip, I think, said, uh, Lord, show us the Father. Yeah. And he says, well, wait, I've been, been with you for all these years. He that has seen me has seen the Father, you know. Um, and, and don't you know that I am in the Father, Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I don't speak on my own, but the Father, as he remains me, he does the works. And then I think elsewhere he said the Father, um, the Son can't do anything by himself. He can only what he sees the Father do. Yeah. So, you know, He's the radiance of God's glory and the perfect, exact representation of his being. So, you know, again, I, I can say that that doesn't get rid of this person's pain. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I think we... It's that pain. And, 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 you know, and, and that is, you know, the Father will bring blessing and life. But when we start accusing God of killing people, then I'm mad at God. I don't want to go to church. And unfortunately, um, preachers us ministers say, well, the Lord took them, you know, need another little angel in heaven. And as in, you're not going to find that in the, in the New Testament. Amen. The ultimate Good. faith is trusting where you don't understand. Yeah, exactly. You know, and no, and That's standing yeah. on what we do know. Yeah. God is good all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is good all the time. And even when we don't understand, I'll, I'm sure all of us have lost loved ones. Yeah. Um, and, and, you stand on the fact of who God is. I may not understand all things. Even the Bible says, 
um, the secret things belong unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. But where I don't understand, I still put my trust in God because mm -hmm. God, you are a good, good father all the time. Yes, yes. And that's where I put my hope and my trust. I lost my wife this past February. Yeah. And um, I, I said to God, I said, God, I said, I know before asking you this, you're not obligated to answer. I said, I just don't mm -hmm. understand why. It's the mm -hmm. second time I've lost a wife and I don't understand it, but I'm not holding it against you. And I am trusting him. Yes. And I'm, I'm trusting him. Yeah. You were going to say what? Well, I, I think it's important that we understand that, you know, uh, the scripture's clear. You know, we can go to Ecclesiastes and, and we understand that th there will be a time to be born and there will be a time to die. Mm -hmm. So uh, we understand if, if God now has given us this word, then we can come to grips that there will be a time that, that we're going to pass away. So I don't need to give credit to the devil for that moment, mm. that he was the author of that every time it happens. Mm. And I certainly understand that at the end of the day, that nothing can happen that God doesn't allow. Yes. Yeah. He's ultimately always in charge. Yes. So I'll say this to that, that you know, so often when someone pass, um, certainly someone who's younger or someone we don't feel uh, should pass at that moment because of whether they have been a good person or they're just a younger person. And we've prescribed what, what time that that would be reasonable in our hearts. Uh, we, we assign it either to God, why, or the devil did it. Uh, y you know, now, <laughs> I'm not so sure where we should assign it. I think that we need to assign it in the fact that I know for a fact that it couldn't happen if God didn't allow it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I, I think that we don't get too uh, accusatory of the Lord uh, when a child is born. Mm -hmm. We celebrate him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we thank him for the life that entered into this world mm -hmm. and we shout him down. And we don't know his thoughts as to why the child came then because he lets us know my thoughts aren't your thoughts. My ways aren't your ways. But on the back end, somehow we question that somehow he missed it. And I think that we have to understand he's the same God then as he was when we shouted him down for the baby being born. We didn't know his thoughts then. We don't know him now but we trust him. Yes, you know? we do. Right. What, what words would you have to offer to this, to this, to this woman that is um, in grief right now? That uh, grief is a good thing. And mm -hmm. it, as the conversation was going on, it made me reflect back to when I was a 16 year old and my cousin was killed and she had just turned 18. And I remember being angry at God and not mm -hmm. understanding. But you know, now years later, what I cherish are what a blessing she was, even for the length of time that she was here. Mm -hmm. Was I angry at God? Yes. Why did he let it happen? It was an accident. It was decisions made by the consequences of our actions. Mm -hmm. And it was due to her actions that she took of crossing a busy road at just the wrong time. And so if you had changed a few things, things may have been differently. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman that hit her wasn't to blame whatsoever. And he struggled with. And so what I think a lot of my grief was that we were so close as cousins. I have all of this love for this person Sure. And no place, no, no person here to share that love with. Yeah. So then I think grief is a good thing because then that's a testament to how much you love the person that is no longer here on earth. Yeah. And it's, it's a process that you go through. And um, it can also be a healthy thing to go through grief if you go through it properly. Right. So that you come out of it on the other side mm -hmm. with some healing. I mean, you, you'll always have a sense of loss, of course, but... Mm -hmm it can help you deal with it better. Yeah. Also, you know, it, this is a, a, a real tough question for all of us, and we've all lost loved ones, and we all know someone, you know, dear to us who've struggled with it, um, particularly in this time of life. We, we're hearing a lot of different stories. Um, but I, I still believe that at the end of the day, it really comes down to you yourself 
having a sure confidence in, in, in the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going to help everyone navigate mm -hmm. these moments uh, in, in, in a way of peace. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get that peace that does surpass our mm -hmm. own understanding because we may not understand it, but we trust God. And, and we know that all things are going to work together for the good, mm -hmm. for those who love Him, called and according to His purpose. This person may not be at that point That's of cool. having mm -hmm. that sure confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm at a different point than I was when I was at 16. And then when I lost my mom several years ago, I still was at a point that I did sink down, was angry, God didn't heal my mom, but God did heal my mom, just not the way I wanted exactly. her to be healed. Mm -hmm. But yet, I went through a time where, as having been a middle school teacher, you know, middle school's chaotic anyway, kids were happy all the time. I wasn't happy, and I didn't think they should be happy either. <laughs> and that was my grief, because, yeah. and I did sink down, but what I came to understand and what this person needs to do is reach out to other people mm -hmm. that can hopefully other Christians that can steer them in the right direction or give them the support that they need because finally I got to a point where I had to reach out. Mm -hmm. Somebody offered after I lost my mom, but I was so angry and I said, no, I'm fine. I don't need any help. I did need help. Yeah. Yeah. And that person offered it. God kept nudging me and finally I did reach out for that help. So it's don't isolate yourself. It's yeah reach out yeah. and for we get help stuck where we don't understand that right. we want to as if as if we're God and we can understand all things yeah. and that's where that total faith and trust comes in and I think of Psalm you know 139 mm -hmm. we've been fearfully and wonderfully made all of my days were written in your book before one of them ever came mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. and so he knows all things we don't and that's where some of these things we're not going to have the answers to, no matter how much we study the scripture, no matter how much, whatever. There's some things you just have to say, God, I trust in who you yeah. are and I trust in your yes. goodness. A yeah. demonstration of our yes. love for him. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if we knew the big picture of how everything was going to play out. We wouldn't need faith. Right. <laughs> right. We wouldn't need faith. Right. <laughs> Great. Well, just one sentence. Don't let your right to know all the answers trump your relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. There are going to be some unanswered questions, yes. period. And you know, I think we pastors think that we have to answer right. why. Yeah, yeah, the devil did it, but that's fine. Uh, they need to know that so they don't get mad at God. But beyond that, you know, don't let it, don't let it get in the way of your faith. Okay. Or right. if you're somebody on the other <laughs> side yeah, well, that you see somebody grieving yeah. and you're like, I don't have the words, I don't have the words. Yeah. You don't need the words. You just need to be present. Just love them. Yeah. And love you're them. Right. That's, yeah. that's what they need. Very well put. All right, let's take a break real quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I certainly hope this has been a help and a blessing to that person. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment with uh, some more very insightful biblical uh, perspective for you right after this. Mm -hmm. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, thank you for staying with us. We're back and uh, more of your viewer questions. Here's one that uh, asks, my life has been blessed, but I see others who deserve blessing, but seem to just endure struggle after struggle. Does God choose to bless some and not others? Could you see where there are circumstances that may lend themselves to that opinion? Absolutely. You, see, you know, what do you think? Does God bless some? And not others. Well, let, you know, <laughs> God, God loves us all. I, yes, I'll begin does. with that. But, but he's God. And, and God reserves the right to, to choose to be God. Uh, and, and to that end, does he? I don't know. I know in Romans, I'll read this in Romans 9, 15. The Bible says, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on a whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom yes. I have compassion. 
you know, he's God. He, he can choose to give tremendous favor mm -hmm. in one area, tremendous blessings in another area. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there's a parable where he uh, went out and uh, talks about how he hired one to come into work and mm -hmm. uh, went out all day long and continued to hire others. And, mm -hmm. and at the end, when it was time to pay, one guy's upset. He's been working all day. And, and he makes the statement to him, am I, am I bad because I'm good? Mm -hmm. Because I gave them the same penny uh, that I gave you and they only worked a part of the day. So yeah, God, God can choose to have compassion and, and mercy on, on one person uh, in another level than he will another. And, and uh, he reserves that right, mm -hmm. he's God. Yeah. Any other comments on that one? Yeah, well, I'm, in looking at the question, um, you know, many, my life has been blessed but I see others who deserve blessings. And I think maybe the word deserve yes. might imply uh, I have to perform. You know, if, ah. it, 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 you know, I perform, so therefore I deserve. And you know, you get back to the gospel for by grace we are saved. And you know, that word saved, I looked that up, that, that word in the Greek is sozo, which, which is used for healing, it's used for wholeness. It, it's just every area of life, not just it certainly includes the new birth, which is most important. But none of us deserve blessings from God. Jesus deserved them, and he went to the cross to take what we deserve so that we could get what he deserved. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that in this particular person's case, I mean, I think there are a lot of answers here, okay? But I think one is, could be for this particular person that we have to remember Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace you are saved through faith, you know, this not of yourselves. It works. Mm -hmm. It's the gift of God, not a result of deserving it, you know, but yeah. of works, not a result of works, but so that no one may boast. But, you know, um, that's just one. I, that's not the answer for everybody. I think this, this particular person might need to hear that part. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, too, I think it depends on our perspective. So you had brought mm. up Job earlier mm -hmm. and Job's friends were looking at it from one perspective mm, yes. and so they were making judgments based on the perspective. Mm. So we can look at somebody's situation and make a judgment mm. that they're not being blessed and wondering why they're not being blessed yeah, or the struggle yeah. but in reality that is maybe a wrong judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, so many times I think when we, because that's certainly something we all want and, and Jesus did die and want to give us an abundant life. But so many times I think we think that if we follow Jesus, that our life is going to be <laughs> blessed and it's going to be without trouble. It's going to be right. without bumps in the road. It's going to be without all these things. And yet when we read the scripture, that is not what the Bible <laughs> says. James told us, count it all joy mm -hmm. <laughs> when you face all these various trials and things. And, and the apostles very frequently found themselves in situations where they were in the perfect will of God. They weren't out of the will of God. Yes. They were doing what God told them to do. And yet they were put in prison. Paul, Paul said, we're persecuted, not abandoned. We're, you know, yes, right. all of these different things that they went through, even in the perfect will of God. And so I think we have to be careful of the mm. way that we judge that situation. Mm -hmm. And James told us it's that perfecting of our faith, that there are things that we are going to go through because some of those struggles are the perfecting of our faith. I remember hearing a story, and I'll just share this really quickly because I think it's powerful. But when a caterpillar goes into a cocoon, creates a cocoon because the caterpillar was, was not born to crawl on the ground. The caterpillar was actually born to be able to soar, but it has to have a transformation. So it goes in that cocoon, it, it, it forms that cocoon. And when it's time for it to come out, that now butterfly has to break open that cocoon and it's a great struggle for that caterpillar that has transformed into a butterfly to press through that cocoon because it's through the struggle that the juices are pushed down on the wings that enable it to soar. And if somebody was to come and to cut open that cocoon, out would plop a blob that would die because mm -hmm. the struggle, yes, mm -hmm. the struggle is what causes it to reach its potential and its destiny. And so sometimes it's that perspective of, you're looking at the struggle the wrong way. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, I'm good. glad I came. 
I never heard that part about the caterpillar. That's, that's, well, that's so enlightening. Yeah. So very yeah. enlightening. Yeah. You Thank know, you for that. One other thing, too, just very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, th there's another answer here which could play, and that is uh, if you read the parable of the sower. Yes. You know, the word is always there. It's for all of us. But, you know, there are hard hearts. There are stony hearts. There are thorny hearts, you yes. know. And I look at people and I think, why do they have such struggles? You know, God, why? And I, I usually don't get an answer. But God also said, you know, if you do thus and so, um, you know, put the lamp in the room, read the word, basically is what he's saying, and get it into your heart to revelation that you can receive 30, 60, or 100 times. And so therefore the measure that you meet is the measure you get. And, and so I think part of the, if not all of the mm -hmm. answer, I hate to say that answer, all the solution. But really, we have to look at the parable of the sower because a lot of the blessing we receive depends on our heart condition and the measure that we meet to the Word of God. Excellent. All right, well, a uh, question, another question here. Um, I am ashamed of things I have mm -hmm. done in my past mm -hmm. and feel judged when I come to church. Uh, there's some interesting dynamics that could, yeah. you know, hmm. have led to that feeling of guilt. But in any event, looking at it face value, I'm ashamed of things I've done in my past and feel judged when I come to church. What, what, what sayest thou? <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like the person has already judged themselves Ooh. by saying, I am ashamed of things I have done in my past. Mm -hmm. So they've judge themselves uh -huh. yeah. and they feel bad about what they've done. Are and they I, not also judging the members of the church perhaps because he, he or she be, feels guilty? Because sometimes I'll make assumptions or judgments on myself and then I put those judgments on myself on other people making assumptions and so about me that are not based on anything they've done or said. I'm just making that assumption yeah, that yeah, the way I feel about myself, that's the way other people yeah, are going to feel about me. Yeah. Mm. I'm not saying that's the case, but I know sometimes I am ashamed of things. I have been ashamed of things. And there have been some things in my past that I was greatly ashamed of. And the devil just kept a tight hold of that noose around my neck, that sin and it was like holding me back. And it was like, okay, other people are gonna, no, other people had no clues to what was going on. Hmm. Nick? It, Sorry, go ahead. Is it possible to get that person nonetheless to come to church, to come back to church, to Absolutely. be restored? Yeah. I, I, I would like to try it if, if the person's listening. I would like to encourage them to catch the tail end of uh, Romans chapter seven, as Paul talks about himself and wanting to do right, but yet doing wrong, mm -hmm. uh, making some mistakes, knowing that this flesh has got me doing things that I shouldn't do. Uh, so let him know that even in Christ, uh, you know, somebody who wrote half of the Bible, <laughs> at least half of the New, New Testament, Testament. Uh, found himself struggling to do right and was disappointed mm -hmm. in some, some mistakes he had made. And, uh, but he understood at the end that there will be no more condemnation. I was going to just say so that. So at the end, he, he, he realized yeah. that then, then therefore no more condemnation. Yes. I, I, I'm going to mess up. I, I have messed up. So I'm not going to continue to condemn myself. I'm not going to let others condemn me. So that no more condemnation needs to be received so deep mm -hmm. into all of us yes. that we don't condemn ourselves. But because of the grace of Christ and, and the blood, we, I'm not going to let you condemn me either. Yeah. So even if I come into the church and somehow someone mishandled me or uh, might have a perception or a thought about me or might treat me some sort of way, I'm not going to allow that way that they treat me to bring me to a place of condemnation. Mm -hmm. So we have to hold our own power yes. in that area that I'm going to free myself from self-condemnation and I'm not going to allow you to put any other condemnation on me. Wow. Well, the forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and, and sometimes we, we mischaracterize. So the Holy Spirit brings conviction 
the enemy brings condemnation. Yes, right. And so the there's a difference, and it comes down to what we started um, talking yeah. about on another program is forgiveness and, and being able to forgive ourselves and then teaching others as well that, uh, that the same forgiveness that we've received, we extend to all. Well, so and the other thing is, is we're going to let other people, their actions, they're going to disappoint because mm -hmm. they're not perfect. Sure. We're going to be hurt whether they intend to hurt or not. Mm -hmm. And are mm -hmm. we going to let the actions of others determine what we are to do? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to let God determine yeah. what we are to do? Or in fact, you said in your earlier remarks on this, that the person going back to church may have a feeling or a notion that everybody is condemning right. them, even though they haven't said anything. Mm -hmm. Sure. That just their very presence mm -hmm means that everybody's condemning and that's mm -hmm. what they're perceiving from others sure. that's perception, I guess. that's not yeah, it's the perception mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes that could be the case mm -hmm. sometimes we get so worked up about doing something we start okay this could possibly happen or that could possibly happen and then that holds us back from doing something yeah. Yeah. but total transparency we have to make sure as the church when people come to yes. the house of fellowship that we are not Yes. Judging. Again. Absolutely. Judging. Because yes. that thought can be actually true mm -hmm. because we've actually mishandled the opportunity mm -hmm. to love on them yes. uh, versus, you know, allowing a, our thoughts to judge them. Yes. Because sure. the church can at times be judgmental yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. and so with that, we should conclude that that person should go back to church. We should. Yes. They should be in church where they can be strengthened. Yeah, exactly. And I would add to that, if it's a church that they don't feel comfortable in necessarily for whatever reason, get to a church where you right do point. feel comfortable, yes. where mm -hmm. you're getting the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God. Well, how do we, is that, is that, is that a question? Well, that leads me to my, <laughs> my next question. Is, uh, there are so many different churches. How do I know which one is right for me? That's another question. <laughs> That's we all know the answer to that one, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, there may be four different <laughs> answers. <laughs> my church, my church, my, my church, church, my yeah. church, my church. But, but that is, a, you know, and I think that's a great way to go right into that question because I personally, there's a scripture that I, I love. And Jesus, Jesus talked about, uh, my, my sheep knows my voice and a stranger yes. they will not follow. Yes. Now, I, I feel that is the same principle that you can use as fall as, as in finding a church. Mm -hmm. If you get to a church and it speaks to you, mm -hmm. it, the word, the truth of the God word speaks to your spirit. It yes. speaks to revelation of understanding mm -hmm. to you. I think that's an indicator that that might be a place that could one, you can consider that, hmm, maybe this is a place that's I'm hearing God. And if I'm hearing God here, maybe it's a place that I can connect and grow with and I can plant myself here. Uh, so I think it's important that you get to a church where you can hear God yes. and you, he can speak. That wraps it up beautifully. That's yes. it. That's it. Thank you so much for all this, mm -hmm. all this wisdom. We've got a, a lot of wisdom that's been poured out here today, and we certainly hope it's been a blessing to you, our viewers. We want to encourage you to continue with your cards and your letters, with your questions, and we will carefully research them in prayer so that we can hopefully bring you the best answers that the Holy Spirit would lead us to give you. That's our program for today, and thanks to our panel for being Thank with you. us and your time. You. We hope you'll tune in again next week at the same time. Until then, I am Bill Harris. God bless you for now. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>